When it comes to the Sega Saturn, there are two schools of thought. There are those who, like myself, love and adore it, but then there are those who consider it an underpowered also ran and unworthy of their time. Whichever view you subscribe to, there is one point to which both parties can agree, and that's the fact that the best games for the system never left Japan, forcing us round-eyed westerners to import the games we wanted the most. While there are many fighting games and 2D shooters that would pass into legend on Sega's 32-bit, there was also a number of gaijin-friendly titles which have since slipped into obscurity over the years. Princess Crown, that you see running here, is one of those. Now for any of you who played the terrific Dragon's Crown from a couple of years ago, well there's something of a spiritual follow-up. But it wasn't the first. Sandwiched between Princess Crown and Dragon's Crown, there was Odin's Sphere on the PlayStation 2, a worthy addition to anyone's game collection, and I'm happy to report that's also getting a remake, which I have since given my blessing. But what about the originator of these games, the template, the game that set the tone? Well, let's have a look, shall we? When the name Atlas is proudly displayed on a title screen, tongues start wagging and many a gamer's underpants start getting moist. For this is the studio that brought us Shin Megami Tensei and the spin-off Persona series, which have both built small but devoted followings in the West. And while Princess Crown shares little in the way of gameplay with its more illustrious stablemates, what it does bring to proceedings is every bit as deep and enjoyable. Now, just in case I haven't laid it on thick enough, I am indeed a fan of this game and of those that continued its legacy, like the aforementioned Odin Sphere on PlayStation 2 and Muramasa, which is available for both the Wii and PlayStation Vita respectively. But while I am admittedly biased, I am not stupid. Despite the mounting evidence to the contrary, because this is in no way a game that will appeal to a wide audience. I know that now, and Sega knew that back in the mid-1990s. However, in these dark times of AAA titles, with their broken promises, empty hype, and DLC skullduggery, forcing many gamers to look harder and dig that little bit deeper to find games that they truly want to play and offer more than paid review scores, open worlds are surprisingly little to do. More than ever, the classic titles of Sega's 32-bit Saturn are being rediscovered for the very first time, and Princess Crown should be placed very highly on that list. So my name's Grey, you've been watching Consoletronics. This has been a quick look at a personal favourite Saturn title of mine that I have wanted to spread the word about for a while now. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, please share this video, like and subscribe. So thanks for watching, and I'll have some more videos up soon. Laters.